Yo, what is going on guys? God in here today bring you a another VOD review. So, I guess some context before we go right into the replay itself. I'm against a 500k Vayne player that took Ghost for this lane and as the matchup already is, it is definitely considered probably one of Renekton's, if not his hardest matchup. Now for me personally, I've always consistently consistently beat Vayne uh, by doing the things that you're about to see. And a lot of people do also credit like, why do I always beat these hard matchups? And I think what I'm trying to get down, like all like the, the main narrative of this like replay itself is how to be patient. Patience is a virtue, as it is, you know, said. And you're definitely going to see that this game. And I think a big reason why Renekton, or like why I can win these really hard matchups that I'm probably not supposed to win is basically down to patience and I think that is definitely a lost thing within these times of league. A lot of people don't play off the fact of being patient because they're worried about being outscaled or you know just things like being too slow and they're not able to like snowball but to be quite honest patience is what actually gets you ahead in these hard matchups. Things like uh, Jace, Timo, Quinn, uh, Cannon, like Vayne, of course, like any of these stereotypical hard matchups, I've never had a problem with them just because I'm patient. And you're going to see how I play it. Uh, like, I mean, you're just going to see like how this play style works in these time matchups because I never really lose them. And if I do, it is always down to myself. It's never the matchup that is making me lose. And Renekton is one of the, if not, probably the best champ in the game or like the most reliable champ in the game to have a, like a chance of being every matchup you can like there's this champs like Riven where she just cannot win against like something like a Renekton like it is literally impossible but for Renekton I think the only matchups that do like feel that way are definitely like mid lane matchups being Azir, Ari, um, maybe a Nico mid lane it's easier top lane but these matchups are definitely harder because the lane's shorter and they have a way of being able to poke at Renekton and to kind of nullify his kit. But top lane, with it being like a, you know, a, a longer lane and the fact you have like jungle presence, like it makes it makes it a lot easier to deal with a champion like Vayne. And as you might know straight away, I opted into taking Exhaust here. I think Exhaust is really good due to the fact that if Vayne wants to all in, your Exhaust comes in clutch. Now, it does not lower her true damage, just to clarify. But her overall kit, like, it uh, lowers her damage by 40, 30%. No, 40%, sorry. <laughs> 40%, and I lower her move speed by 30%. And because she took Ghost in this lane, which is actually quite a common thing Vayne players do top, at least when I go against them, like, it actually, like, hard destroys this playstyle she's opting into. So, it's definitely worthwhile considering, and... When your junglers want to gank your lane, using exhaust just means they cannot run away. So they're, they're practically death sentenced in that moment. And that's why I took exhaust here over ignite. So it, it is something I'm also trying out uh, recently in my games. So you probably are, are going to see more of this in the harder type of matchups. But anyways, let, um, let's like begin with the actual VOD itself. So yeah, I also take a uh, D shield second wind here. These are my runes. I think any matchup that requires you to sustain and, you know, take minimal damage. These runes are, without the doubt, the best, like, you know, these are just the best to reach that objective. Like, just keeping your health up, minimizing any kind of damage. Like, people that do lose the matchup never take these runes. And I don't know why either. Like, every time I've took second wind D-Shield, I win my lane or I, su I survive, which is basically the core goal like if I, if my team's all ahead and uh, I'm just playing to survive and playing safe like these runes are going to help me just not feed vain and let her scale so this is kind of like the reason why I took them if you're wondering so level one I, I go uh, guard tribush here we already have like a kind of scuffed five point vision I mean someone else should be here really to like in case Rakan invades but uh, essentially we have like most of the the sectors covered early so i go to try bush just to see if anyone invades topside and um straight away as we are going to see they actually do go for an invade and because i'm here just watching getting ready like in case someone invades i'm able to notice this quickly we ping 
see them on the map. I place my ward, which actually was a mistake here, as you're going to see shortly. But I place the ward, then they get some XP and gold. Pretty bad for a top laner such as me, because that means Vayne is going to get level 2 a lot earlier, which is not a good thing. Because <laughs> that means I can't even go near the minions or stay in XP range if she hard zones me off. So in these moments, you may as well not ward, to be honest, because you already know that they're invading. And as long as your jungler or somebody else places a ward, like here, you're going to know if, like, people are leaving. So yeah, I didn't really gain anything out of my ward. I actually assisted the Vayne and Cogmore there. <laughs> By the way, as I am recording this, I still do have COVID. So if I am, like, sniffing a lot or coughing, that is kind of the reason, but... I'm going to try and do my best not to do I for those. <laughs> so we still don't know if they're in our jungle, but because we did place a ward down here, we do see the Udi and Rakan, so that gives us enough, uh, enough of a heads up to see that they're not in our jungle. Just going to fast forward it a bit. I don't want this um, commentary taking too long. But I do a little bit of a... Uh, I'll just help Talon a little bit there. I take Q start here, you know, some people could like take E start, but again, our objective is basically to survive. It is not to lose health, like we're trying to be patient. We come online in this matchup at level 3 and level 6, so level 3 we can start doing trades and being more aggressive, but before that, we just want to play on the edge. And a thing you should do in these type of matchups is imagine, imagine their range, like radius, like how they can attack you attack you so being that i've played like most champs in the game i have a good understanding of what range like champions have so if you're like a player that's like unsure like where they're going to attack from just picture like a circle around the character so i would see like vayne having like this range i mean she has 550 we can't really check it in the replay but it's like it's like to this minion here and then it's like around. So we want to stay outside of that. So every time she walks up towards us, we walk back. And just imagine like the range indicator is coming closer. So if it's to this minion here, I'm out of the range. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, let me rephrase that. I'm trying to stay out of range and use my Q to last it. Then I'm going into the bush, which means Vayne can't hit me. So I'm going to abuse Fog of War here so she cannot get any damage onto me. Again, uh, trying to stay in max range. I have my Q back up now. I will Q. Obviously, I went a bit too close this time, so she gets her auto Q off. I walk back to the bush, so I minimize extra damage. I then walk the opposite direction. All of this is basically micromanagement, like trying to just get away from her auto attacks and play like long range. A lot of people get very greedy in the beginning of the game and they will just like go for CS and then they'll take all this damage and waste flash level one or potentially die. And because we're dying, that's giving Vayne like such a huge item advantage to a point where we can't even play the game. It is so punishing to die here. That's why we're just playing it really safe. Like it's a lot better to miss CS but gain XP rather than greeting for CS than dying, which ultimately, ultimately gives her more xp and gold <laughs> in the process so it's a lot better not to die here and in the future of the game too we're going to play off our jungler try and get him to come top lane so we don't really want to feed vein too much so i'm just standing in range to make sure like i get xp here i think vein should be a bit more aggressive in this matchup which she is being now like just playing like off the edge of my minion wave denying me but this guy didn't really abuse me that much. Fortunately. Or maybe I played it pretty well. <laughs> if I give myself some credit. So now we hit level 2. Again, we are being patient. That is the key here. Just going to speed up a little bit. So the wave crashes. Vayne goes to ward now. We know this. Talon is pathing bot side. So... I just need to try and last it, do what I can to survive. They do have an Udyr. Like, their comp was very weird, by the way. Like, they have a Viego, Udyr. Like, these are champs that do, like, really not do a lot. 
And before, um, like, the game actually started, we did see that, like, Udia died bot side. So it could be possible for him to do a uh, bot to top and then dive with a vein. If I, like, misplay. That's why it's very important, too, to keep your health up. Because if I am losing a lot of health here, that does set up the dive with a cannon creep. Like, a cannon creep wave. So it's a big enough wave where, like, I'll take enough damage from the wave. And also, like, I'll be susceptible for, like, Udia coming and then... Dying to Vayne stun or Udia stun combo. So yeah. Just trying to get as many minions as I can. Just play off Q. I'm level 3 now. Which means we can go more aggressive. Do a little bit of a trade there. I don't do a lot of damage but it's fine. It all amounts up. I have way more sustain than she does. I'm level 4 now. I have Fury. So I'm being a little bit cautious here. I am expecting like potential dive threat, although I can outplay with the exhaust and flash. And because I have enough health too, I can definitely like afford to kind of go for the outplay. See, because I'm like spacing good enough, Vayne can never get a damage on me too, as we see here. So I'm just playing off the fact like of a range indicator, just trying to stay out of it. This is how you play into any like matchup that wants to poke you. So right now, I actually ward this, and I did watch the replay before as well, just to like remember what happened with the game. How far back? Okay, I went too far back. But um, let me just like fast forward. So that's a trade we did, and um. So I was expecting, I was expecting the dive potentially, or like some kind of like threat. And as we see, Udia actually is going topside here, and he was waiting for me because I played it like pretty well, staying out of range. It actually disinterests Udia from staying any further because again, he's gonna be missing a lot if he tries to overstay for the dive, and then I could potentially outplay it too. So it's good to think of these things too, just ahead of time. And I did drop the ward again, just in case if he, you know, sticked around. Do a small trade there. So my trade of choice into a, like a vein is e EQ, W, which gives enough um, time to get all my damage off. Because most veins will condemn you if you dash in. Just, just like be aware of that. They will like try and buffer their condemn on the fact that you're dashing and... Because Renekton has so many animation cancels too, we can cancel our Q animation on impact with our W if we would right click right after. I mean, you could do it with your like normal auto attack or your W, but because I'm trying to get as much damage as possible here, I'm just going for the W instead. So then we do this and then I'm freed out. I don't take any extra damage. And this is setting me up for the potential all in I can go for. Missed my opportunity though. I didn't really play it properly how I wanted to. Don't just speed things back up. Right now we're going for the all in. Bane tries to ghost. I exhaust. Bane has to panic run away. And just like that, we secure the kill. Pretty simple things. Again, patience is everything. We be patient. We keep enough health. We build fury, do some small trades, and then we go for the kill. So again, to show that. I E off the minion, I try and like, I make it look so like I wasn't going in, so I click upwards when my character's facing up here, so it looks like I'm walking towards my tower. Then I dash in, where Vayne might potentially walk into me. So I kind of mask the way I'm going in here. I'm trying to be very creative. So I E in, Q cancel, auto, E, E away immediately so I don't get hit into the wall. So as she condemns, I land here. Like, it is very important doing these fast combos because it gives you a uh, time to escape, like, potential situations where you can die. Yeah, Vayne tries to ghost. I immediately exhaust. She has 299 moon speed just from the exhaust alone. So that moon speed she was trying to get, like, it's not doing anything for her. Like, she's lower moon speed than me. That's why exhaust is so huge here. No one can escape 
you in like these type of lanes. Yeah, I empower W with good fury management, flash Q, and then we secure the kill. And just like that, we kill Vayne. All because we are patient and playing the right fights. And another factor too is because she was like pushing automatically. In any other game, when my jungle passed topside, we always kill her as well. So next we uh, pick up the Serrated Duck. I go for Prowler's Claw in this matchup because any chance that gives me like another dash to reach Vayne, like I just one shot her. She's not going tanky because that's that would put, put her behind. And with that, like I just get a free opportunity to go full damage and one shot. So again, we gotta play off the ropes. Um, I kind of compare this to, I mean, if there's any boxing fans out there, I compare like matchups like this to uh, Muhammad Ali versus George Foreman. A lot of the strategy that was like employed in that fight was that Muhammad Ali would use the ropes to try and keep him up, shell up against um, George Foreman to tire him out. And then when George Foreman didn't expect it, Ali would like do a flurry just to, uh, you know, kind of back away uh, George while he was like tired out. And that's kind of how I play in these matchups. Like I try and like play off the ropes, try to rope a dope here. And then I go for these small trades that I've been showing to do some damage and I disengage. And then I make Vayne or like my enemy very uncomfortable. And then I look for the all in when they don't expect it. That's kind of how I approach any of these like matchups. And it works every time for me. I'll lose some CS, but that doesn't matter. Like I'm getting like kills off it. And I'm also tilting the enemy top lane that's trying to cow pick me. Like this guy was a river main too. I looked at his account. He was a river main and he uh, wanted to pick Vayne to try and like tilt me. But I mean, you can't tilt me on my best day. Especially in matchups that make me think. <laughs> The matchups that I do lose are actually ones that are con like considered easy, but I just I don't have that patience like I do with these matchups, so I end up being a little bit reckless, and I think that's like how I can lose. Also, I do want to talk about Vayne's purchase here. Berserker Greaves is pretty common, and most of the time, like we will expect her to like buy like some boots, like tier twos before me. So I am like a little bit of a disadvantage, but because I have exhaust again, it doesn't really matter. And as soon as I land on the vein, my ease, I get like so much damage off with the serrated duck. And she can't build armor for it. So it's, it doesn't really worry me, but I do have to back some point soon to get my tier ones at least. Do an EQ trade here. I also slow push the wave so it would build up and then crash, which would give me a time to back or at least dive. And as we're going to see right now, I do try and ping for the dive. I think I did already, actually. Yeah, I pinged for the dive already. So, Talon's coming up. The wave, uh, we did lose a bit because Talon was warding over here. But the next wave's coming in, which gives us, like, you know, time to go in. So I do Q just to push in. I do lose some Fury, but it's fine because I'm my ult. Talon comes over the wall. I E in, W R, and then we secure a kill, just like that. And this all happened too because of the slow push. So in this time, I didn't know where Vayne was, so I expected she backed, and because Talon was pathing towards top, this gives like a moment to where we can like tower dive, and you'll see this a lot in pro play too. Pro play will like stack a wave like this as the enemy backs, and then when the jungler is like playing on our side, like they could just uh, force a dive, especially on an assassin like Talon. And Renekton. So I build up the wave. Again, I ping multiple times. I am trying to be more authoritative with how I play now. So I am pinging a lot more to communicate my actions. So we build the whole wave up. Talon comes. And then we get the kill. That simple. If you're a high elo player, definitely consider this. Because junglers will listen if you command them to. Junglers are very greedy people. They will definitely do things that are in their best interest to also get them ahead. Especially on Assassin Champions. Now, we just killed Vayne. Vayne is running back up to the lane. Talon's still around here, so I am commanding him to stay here. Like I ping on my way just to uh, signal Vayne. I also do ping Vayne in chat, but it doesn't show in the replay. That just gives uh, like an indication that 
you know, I want to kill Varian again. I want to command, like, my actions, like what we're going to do. So I build up Fury here. I E. I exhaust just to keep her, like, in range from escaping. Sadly, I can't really get my damage off here, but we still get the kill, regardless. Maybe I could have played it a little bit better, but ultimately, it doesn't really matter. Next, Viego tries to flash over the wall, trying to get a kill on me. He is pretty strong, so I'm going to dash onto the minion here. Double dash away. And then Viego can't really get any extra damage off. This next thing I got blamed for. And I want to show you guys like my thoughts on the matter. And why I thought this was bad for my teammates. First of all, we notice that there's three minions here. One of them dies. Next one dies right after. Talon just proct his first strike, I think. So that is on cooldown now. Oh, wait. Was it? No, never mind. He already has first strike. Oh, wait, does he? Oh, it is on cooldown. So, I'm low. I don't have a dash. I have my W and Q, right? Ari's roaming up. I see that. But we also see that Rakan's running up in the lane, which is level 6, and he has ultimate. Talon also has no first strike or ultimate. So, right away, we can expect that we can't just dive because, for one, we have no minions. Me walking up is potentially suicide because I'm giving away gold if I die and I also have like no ult. I don't have anything else. So Talon gets caught here. Try to go for a trade. He loses a lot of health. Ari finally ults over the wall even though there's like no minion wave. So she'll tank a tower shot. There's a Rakan right behind her with full sums abilities. Talon dies now. Rakan goes in. Me being very clueless here and kind of being pressured to fight in the moment because I'm being pinged. I walk back in and then I end up just like griefing. Like, I die for this because I followed my teammates. And I just miss a kill, but yeah. I got flamed here because apparently I should have been here and that was not the play. My teammates did not have the right idea. And because I was, again, pressured... I kind of just killed myself there. So, I want to teach you guys that in these type of, like, moments, trust your gut instinct and never, like, give up your, your like, gold. Because all this gold just was funneled into Viego. And Viego was actually a big threat in this game. And a reason why we could have lost the game, too. So, yeah. I shouldn't give, like, him any, like, type of extra gold income. My team entered it. And I should not have followed that's kind of matter. But moving on. Vayne died again, I think. How did she die again? Oh, she ran mid lane and died. Okay, so she died. She's very tilted right now. She ran mid lane because Viego covered top momentarily and then she got caught. This is why Vayne mid's not good because you're just overexposed in this lane and then you kind of just get... You're just dead. <laughs> but that's just Vayne in solo lane, to be honest. Vayne in solo lane's not really strong into champs that we drafted. I have Prowler's Claw now, so I have more, like, ways to also reach a vein or one-shot other people. So I can just do whatever I want. I shove the wave in, get another plating. Right now, I'll just try and ward. I ward here, just so I can see if, like, anyone walks up, like Viego or Udia. We have no vision on the map where he was either, so that's why I warded. The ward there. We're going to freeze on a vein right now. And I know it sounds crazy. <laughs> you don't often see it, but because I have Prowler's Claw now, I have every threat in the world. And I can just deny Vayne from scaling. And if you ever get that chance in a matchup like this, take it like, you know, like just grasp onto that and abuse it while you can. So because I did this, I can literally zone Vayne now. Vayne cannot do anything. I don't entirely abuse, like, the fact that I have this power, but in other games, I should definitely do this. But I am, like, zoning her off here. If she walks in, I'm looking to EW. I probably should have played a bit more aggressive there to deny the cannon. I EW. And then Q the wave for some reason. I'm not sure why. I should have actually E'd in. I, I, like, win no matter what if I fight, but I was being cautious because... I didn't see where Udia was. Udia could also, like, be here. A lot of junglers are very crafty, and they can just be waiting in lane, so... 
I took like a safer option. But even then, I still queued the wave, which isn't helping my cause to play safe. So that was a mistake on my behalf too. So I do see that Udi is going towards our jungle. And he could path up here, so I'm not really trying to go too aggressive because I don't want to over it expose myself. Although I do it now, which was stupid. But then I realize that he could come through here, so I start start like trying to walk back. Bane disappears. I push in the wave. So I do again see Udia. I am like just walking there now, try and block his route to escaping and from that moment we get the kill which is pretty good yeah any moment like that too you want to shove the wave and then roam and the great thing about going lethality on Renekton too is that you're having like way more damage to one shot minions so it gives you like instant wave clear that's how he was able just to one shot the wave really beneficial Trying to build Fury right now. Will soon fall. I want to do like... I think uh, I'm really like making a lot of mistakes in my trading. Like I'm just being a bit too slow. And I'm not being confident enough. But I think it's just because I haven't played against a Vayne in a long time. And I know she's 0-4. But in my head I'm still trying to be safe. Which was a bad thing to do. And I think it's also because I didn't know where people were on the map. That's why I'm taking like some of these trades. And... As I uh, also saw, the Ego showed up eventually, so I mean, my hypothesis, hypothesis to play the way that I am playing was actually pretty correct. Also, this game, it definitely wasn't active from my perspective, but I am just trying to show you an example of where I am, like, just being safe. Because had I int my lane, like, this game would be ultimately really hard because they all scale pretty well in their team apart from Udia. And my team was giving Viego kills, so if I was feeding this vein, I think we would lose for that reason. So it's kind of like why I'm covering it, just so like I can show you guys like how to be an asset when playing these type of matchups. So we push in the lane again. I'm just walking around to see if like Skull Crab was available, which it wasn't. Keeping the wave in the middle. We have like no vision at all. Just gonna plant a ward down there. I do overextend here, and then I'm forced to like fight this. And then I kinda learn like, oh wait, I can just kill Vayne. So I exhaust. Also Q and she's dead. So that's kind of my power here. I didn't really realize myself, like I'll just win that hard, but yeah, I kinda should know. <laughs> Based on maining this champion, but I'm gonna credit the fact that I don't because I've been playing League as much and I'm still trying to get back into it. That's why I'm kind of like doing bar reviews too, just to like kind of show you guys too, like what I'm learning. That way you can also like better yourself or have a similar understanding to how I'm playing. So Viego's overextended here. I didn't, I did want to fight, but I don't think we end up fighting here. Oh no, I think we do. So like, Talon wants to do blue. I'm just standing in the bush, waiting for him to like walk down. He eventually comes down, but we just disembark from that because there's nothing really else to do there. Which gold do I have? 1,700. So next item, I am going... Okay, let's go back a second. Next item, I am going Blair Ruin King. If you're going Prowler's Claw, Blair Ruin King is without a doubt the strongest item you can get. Like... It is definitely recommended if you want, the f like, one-shot potential. Now, here I didn't know they actually had wards, but they had, like, a lot of wards here. So, I end up getting, like, gang-banged. Which was, it was really weird on their part. I think they were tilted, so they were, like, they were just coming top lane for the sake of it. Because in this time, we're just shoving mid. And also, we're, like, getting bot lane as well. But, I didn't expect this at all. <laughs> so, I was a little bit bewildered in this moment. 
But um, I'm going to show you guys something that I want your opinion on in the comments. Did my E bug out here? So, my E is... Usually, any other champion in the game would get hit by the C. But for some reason, Udia didn't take any E damage. And I didn't get my dice because of it. And I also land just like near the Rakan, but... I'm going to say, like, I don't really care if my E didn't hit the Rakan, but I feel like it should have hit the Udia. Like, he's even standing in the projectile. <laughs> like, the uh, visual effect, so. From that, I don't get my dice, and then I'm practically dead. I was planning to E, then, like, E dash again with a buffer, then flash. But because all this happened, I'm just, like, dead from that alone. And I might die anyways, but I did think it was a little bit bullshit that uh, I didn't get my dice. But in this time, we get the mid tower. We do kind of throw. My team is asking to FF because they're tilted. As uh, per usual in EU Masters and Diamond. So next, uh, I run back to lane. I We do see the Udyr, like pathing towards here as well. Like they're just chasing the Talon down. Like they're doing some really crazy stuff. Talon goes here. Udi is already in the jungle. I immediately walk down. And here's another interesting thing that happens within this game. So I come. We see that Udi is right here. Now. In this moment. Look what happens. He vanishes. And he was right here. Like in the moment. I was like. Where the hell did he go? <laughs> Where is he? <laughs> Like, he just vanished completely, and then he's gone, like, without a trace. I'm just like, huh? <laughs> but yeah, like, dude was, uh, he was gone. <laughs> Drop a ward there, in case Viego shows. Just kind of waiting for something to happen. I could walk here, then I get collapsed on, so I'm just taking a, a breather, just looking around. I see Viego here again. Just kind of waiting. Very boring game, to be honest. <laughs> we get a pick mid, so then I push. Because if they do stay here, like, they're, they're kind of trolling, so... Also, ejected timers, I forgot that. We got Dragon uh, coming up very shortly. I do notice that we're fighting here, too. End up picking the kill on the Viego, pretty huge. I can start using my lead here. I can one shot on demand, but I'm not sure why I'm not trying to. I, I don't need to. I don't need to like potentially die and give up like any gold to Vayne, but I definitely think I could be more aggressive. But I don't. I think it's also because like I don't want to prowlers and get condemned, and then lose out like on my percentage damage buff. I mean that's like another reason why I'm like doing these trades. Trying to get to like condemn on the E and then do something afterwards, but there's always like near a tower or someone's coming to where I can fully utilize. Where I can't fully, fully utilize like what I want to do. So dragon's coming up. I push the wave in and I'm gonna start roaming. We're already behind uh, two dragons, so I am just gonna like make my way down here. The enemies did have Herald too, so that's like a no reason why I moved down. Like, Viego has the Herald. I'm just like staying here. Viego then uses the Herald. We get the Dragon. I ping for assistance. They're looking for a push. I'm trying to build the Fury here too. So, I think we're in a good moment here to like actually like do something, but Ezreal ends up like going a bit too deep and then. Rakan gets a really insane ultimate. He played this really well. And I got pressured to go in. Well, it's not that my team pressured me, but I kind of just went in like being stupid and I ended up dying, which was very ridiculous. So I should have waited back, played it slow. Like only Ezra would have died, but because I died, like they are able to get the tower here. Not that I'm like the biggest asset in the game to where, you know, Oh, I, I'm dead, so they can, like, push. No, it, it's just that, like, they had more numbers and they could just get the tower. Like, if I survive, survive they'd, like, end up backing off. 
It also did give them a Baron opportunity here. So they do run towards the Baron, which we, we see. We do ping there around there. We get the Cogmore. I ping that, they're probably on the Baron. And lo and behold, they are. Classic uh, Baron throw here. And this ultimately helps us close out the game here. So... I'm just kind of wang around taking Krugs because there's no income. Bit of a frustrating game because, again, I don't really do much. And I hate these games, but... Again, I think not inting a matchup like this is ultimately what matters. And it's kind of the purpose of this VOD review to begin with. On more rec stands, I do like the... I do like one good thing all game. <laughs> Push. And then we just slowly close out the game with Baron buff, which they threw. Kill the Udia. And then we're just going to close out the game. A flash on the Viego. You know, pretty nice combo. And just like that, we win the game. So yeah, uh, not the most entertaining game, but I think a lot of this was just like how to play into one of the harder matchups. Because again, a lot of people struggle with Vayne and you know, you could say like, yeah, I had a good team. The enemies did draft very weirdly. You can say that, but the game was essentially just like a 1v1 top lane. And the moments where we did dive and like whatnot over Talon, like that, that can be applied to any like jungle you have. Like any jungle with a stun or has one shot potential. If you play the same way that I did, that's always going to work no matter what. Like I never not have like a matchup like this against Vayne. Like it always goes the same way because the way I'm playing it. Um, so yeah, that is the, the Vayne matchup. So I hope you guys learned a lot from it. Um, if there's any matchups that you guys want to see in the comments, then feel free to, you know, type it. I'm go going to be trying to upload every day for a month. That is my challenge. It's a little bit hard at the moment with COVID, like trying to do some of the, the main things I want to do. So for now, I am just like making these VOD reviews because it's easy for me. I'm a little bit breathless right now as well, just trying to commentate. So yeah. Sure, I take it a bit slow, but I am planning to upload a lot from uh, now to uh, like the end of April. Just, just as like a challenge, you know, just see what I can do. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you like the content, make sure to give it a like. Make sure to sub as well if uh, you want to see more of my stuff. And yeah, hope you guys have a good one. Goodbye.